Getting into the Pokemon trading card game is easier than ever before, but with dozens of products, multiple formats, and thousands of cards to choose from, where do you start? If you're building on a budget, then there's always the trusty theme deck. With a bit of cash and a lot of creativity, you can build something bold and battle ready. You're watching Deck Boss. Hi everyone, and welcome to Deck Boss, the show where we take classic theme decks and give them a competitive tune-up. This week, we're going to try and supercharge the Stormcaller theme deck from Lost Thunder. Stormcaller is the companion to last week's Blazing Volcano, which is both amazing and disappointing because there is no third theme deck featuring a certain Aurora Pokemon. It's more of a mid-tier theme deck with a kinda janky strategy, a decent enough deck boss, and a good supply of staple cards within. Now without further ado, let's crack this open and meet our deck boss. The Stormcaller theme deck is built around Raikou, a saber-toothed cat doggy with a mustache to die for. Raikou is a basic electric type Pokemon with 120 HP and just one attack. Lost Voltage costs 1 Lightning Energy and 1 Colorless Energy, and it does 30 damage base, plus 90 more if you have any Lightning Energy in the Lost Zone. How thematically appropriate. As far as deck bosses go, Raikou is a mixed bag. In the theme deck metagame, it has the advantage of being a relatively big basic with an inexpensive attack and respectable damage output. But outside of that metagame, this card leaves a lot to be desired. It does just one thing, its damage output can leave a lot to be desired against bigger targets like EXs, GXs, and Vs, and hitting its maximum damage output comes with a thematically appropriate but strange prerequisite. Like, okay, ha ha, I get it, you need to have some lost thunder to make its attack work, but because Pokemon's version of the banished pile is damn near inaccessible after cards go in there, the idea of actively sealing off resources for a mediocre attack is unattractive at best. So this deck boss is going to need a lot of work to make it usable. Basically, if we can meet the whole Lost Thunder requirement, then it might just be a matter of leveraging a relatively cheap 120 damage attack to keep the pressure up on our opponent. And thankfully, the expanded format has plenty of tools for the job. Now, let's jump back to the theme deck and see what it gives us to work with. Stormcaller has exactly one way to get lightning energy into the Lost Zone, and it comes in the form of this Ampharos. Its Unseen Flash ability lets you send two lightning energy from your hand to the Lost Zone in order to paralyze the opponent's active Pokémon. The fact that you need to set up a Stage 2 Pokémon, and then banish two valuable resources from your hand, just for paralysis, means that we're going to need to find something a little better to get Raikou rolling. You get a nice little draw package with Zepstrika, but it's a bit of a strange 3-1 line, so that's something. But still, uh, it's a decent draw 4 on a 1 prizer, which is always nice. There's some pseudo energy acceleration slash recovery in the form of Naganadal, but more likely this is here to cover weakness, which is actually really solid in a theme deck. You get the same great Pokeball package from Blazing Volcano, consisting of Nest Ball, Ultra Ball, and Timer Ball. In the base theme deck at least, these are all perfectly usable. Your main draw supporters are Lily, Tate and Liza, Copycat, and Professor Kukui. All have their unique function, and all of them can get you out of a tough spot if played at the right time. You get the ever useful Switch, but you also get an escape rope, which can help you steal a cheeky KO or just remove a threat from the active spot. There is a rescue stretcher for a bit of recovery, and a lonely energy switch, which combos well with Naganadal to help charge up Raikou. And the rest is your typical theme deck filler, so we won't sweat it. Now, you know I'm a big advocate of grabbing a pair of any theme deck you might want to try out. It is the most straightforward way to complete your playset of certain cards, but hey, singles are a thing, so do whatever works for you. And now that we've got the basics down, let's jump on over to PTCGO to see how we can upgrade this deck. Alright, so after some serious brainstorming, I've put together a list that tries to get the formality of Lost Zoning Lightning Energy out of the way quickly, allowing you to start hitting decent numbers on the cheap. 
Aside from Raikou, this deck features two heavy hitters, one V and one GX. Both are pretty affordable these days and offer some much needed flexibility and firepower. Tapu Koko V is here because it can hit for 200 damage and has free retreat. Because Raikou can only hit for 120 damage at most, Tapu Koko can provide the big damage needed for a 1-2 punch to take out tag teams and even some VMAXs. That 200 damage can also scale up even higher pretty quickly thanks to all the modifiers that this deck runs. Zero Aura GX is there to give free retreat to everything that has lightning energy attached, and in a pinch can hit for 160 damage, which can help put big targets over the line in tandem with Raikou. It also has a GX attack that can quickly charge up the field if the discard pile is full of lightning energy. Tapu Koko Prism Star is a mandatory inclusion for all lightning decks. You can pop it off of the bench and into the lost zone to accelerate two lightning energies from your discard to two of your bench Pokemon. It's great recovery, or a nice way to get your attacks off quickly. Jirachi is there for its Stellar Wish ability, which lets you check the top five cards of your deck and grab an item card from among them. This deck frequently needs to dig for big damage modifiers, and one annoying item in particular, so Jirachi is a must-have here. And then there's the 2-2 line of Poipol and Naginatal. I wanted to stay true to the theme deck, and honestly, it's handy to have the energy recovery and the ability to hit fighting Pokemon for weakness, so that made it a pretty easy inclusion. It also pairs nicely with Energy Switch here to help charge up our attackers fairly efficiently. On the item side, Lost Blender is the necessary evil that makes this deck work. It lets you send two cards from your hand to the Lost Zone in order to draw one card, which, critically, means that we can get a single Lightning Energy in there to make Raikou live for the rest of the game. I don't really want to have to play this, and I don't want to play it at the numbers we have it, but this is the fastest and most efficient way to Lost Zone something, and we kind of have to run it at at least three copies, because if we prize all of them, then uh, you're doing suboptimal damage all game. And, you know, at a three to four count, you have a pretty good shot of grabbing one fairly early in the game. Electro Power lets all of our electric Pokemon hit for 30 extra damage for a turn. And luckily, you can stack the effect of Electro Powers for up to 120 damage, let's say, if you were to hit all four in one turn, which is kind of busted. Choice Band likewise gives you a little extra oomph, allowing the equipped Pokemon to do an extra 30 damage to enemy GXs and EXs. Unfortunately, you don't get Vs, so that's not great, but in this deck, I wanted to have the extra little push, so that's why Choice Band is here over something like Muscle Band, for example. Thunder Mountain Prism Star makes all of our electric Pokemon's attacks cost one lightning energy less, which will help to keep our attacks cheap and efficient, and can usually be used to get off a critical attack in a very tight spot. A skateboard is there for a Jirachi, allowing it to pivot in and out since it doesn't enjoy the same free retreat perks that most of our electric Pokemon do. Cynthia is a powerful draw supporter, and since we don't really want to discard anything here in this deck, it's my preferred choice over something like Professor's Research or Professor Sycamore. I should mention that Professor Kukui is actually a really attractive option here because while it only gives you a draw 2, it also buffs your damage by 20 for one turn, which can be stacked with our other modifiers to help push for key KOs. N is there as a pseudo reset stamp slash Marnie, giving us a way to control our opponent's hand in the late game or just refresh our own without having to burn a Cynthia. It is best saved for the later game in circumstances like this though, since late game ends can actually help you mount a comeback by setting your opponent down to one or two cards in hand, and then maybe you leave something stuck in the active, or you take out their key attacker and then leave them with no way to build up another one. Volkner is another critical supporter. It allows you to fetch a lightning energy and an item card, which means that we want to see this sooner rather than later, because it's the easiest way to grab a Lost Blender with the energy that you need to pitch into the Lost Zone, ensuring that we've fulfilled Raikou's one condition for its attack. Guzma is there to drag out targets on the bench, and it pairs very well with the free retreat options that this deck has. You can drag something up, free retreat something out, and then bring in your attacker to swing hopefully for the KO. Finally, we play three speed lightning energy just to help with consistency, as well as eight basic lightning energy. Eight might not seem like a lot, and it can be a stretch since you kinda need to lost zone one, but then between Naginatal and Tapu Koko Prism Star, 
you do have plenty of ways to get your energy back into play. And that's the deck. Like many higher level lightning decks, it's all about consistency and hitting big numbers relatively quickly. This particular theme deck did need a bit more work, but hey, I think this list is actually a pretty good place to start if you're looking to upgrade it. Now, let's hop on over to PTCGO's Expanded Ladder and see if we can spread a little shock and awe with our boy Raiko.
And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Our mustached Sabretooth did pretty well against an army of multiprizers and some very annoying electric ghosts. When you can get it set up, Raikou's attack at 120 damage is a really good starting point to stack up huge numbers. You know, there was almost never a point when I felt I couldn't get a solid two-hit KO on anything big that my opponent put up, which I think is definitely a strength of this deck. I mean, honestly, looking at a similar deck in Zapdos that's built around a Pokemon that just does 80 damage with its own unique setup, it's clear that Raikou, sharing a lot of those same support options, can definitely do well enough. Now, as far as the shortcomings of the deck go, I think the comparison with Zapdos actually tells you everything you need to know. Zapdos works really well because its main attacker is incredibly cheap to charge up and requires less support to make its only attack work. So Zapdos has the room to tech in a suite of things like Ultra Beasts, for example, or Picarom if that's the route you want to go, but Raikou has to dedicate so many spaces in the deck to Lost Zone support and also to Energy Acceleration that it's not always as immediately threatening as a deck like Zapdos can be. So that's something to take away from it. But as we've seen, there are ways you can kind of build around that and make Raikou at least relatively efficient compared to, you know, a top tier deck like Zapdos was at its prime. Now, if you guys have any ideas about how you would upgrade this theme deck, punch them up in the comments section below. In particular, if there's a faster way of getting lightning energy into the lost zone, I am very keen to know. It's an interesting mechanic, and I don't think it's one that's been explored that much in the TCG outside of Lost Thunder and any of the sets containing things like Prism Stars. Uh, I would like to see, I'd like to see more of it. I don't know that much about the game before the Sun and Moon era generally. So yeah, uh, educate me. And that'll about wrap it up for this week. If you enjoy the show, please like the video, leave a comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. We're closing in on 200 subs, and as that number ticks up, my brain gets filled with crazy ambitious new ideas for the channel. So hey, let's keep pushing and I will keep thinking up zany things to do with Pokemon cards. And that's it for now, ladies and gents. I will see you next week. And until then, take it easy.